So we were welcome to this debriefing session and uh, congratulations on scoring a 740. Um, you have an excellent quant score, really, really good verbal score and, and a really good improvement from a, uh, from a 660 overall. So, so Vivek, let's start with your GMAT journey. We were talking about it earlier. You said uh, you started thinking about the test about a year ago, and you said you were walking from uh, from from the June of last year till December, which is when you started running, which is when you bought the GMAT course. So, let's talk about that walking period first. So, so what were you doing? How? Yeah. I initially got to know about this test, or I um, started thinking seriously about GMAT was when one of my uh, friends got, he also got a 740, and he got an admit to Arizona State with a full scholarship. What's his name? Uh, Gaurav, his name is Gaurav. Oh, Gaurav. Gaurav. I, I, I think I'm in touch with him because I live in Phoenix, Arizona, so. Okay. So that's interesting. Yes. So, uh, through him only, I got to know about GMAT and he uh, 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 shared with me the OGs and all uh, PDFs, whether uh, he was having with PDFs. So mm -hmm. I started with the, uh, seeing those questions, PDFs and few online materials. Uh, but initially, whatever online questions I got, th those were very easy. So You're talking uh, I about was, Gaurav Anurag, is that? Yes, yes, correct. correct. Yeah, yeah, IT Kharagpur guy. Yeah, IT Kharagpur guy. Yes, 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 yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. Uh, so, uh, means uh, that time the questions what I uh, went through wo were pretty easy because I was mm. able to solve quants within 30 seconds without using mm. pens. So, at, th at that time, I had a feeling, okay, I can definitely score a 750 or 780 or something like that. Because mm -hmm. uh, the questions, maybe uh, whatever I thought I saw were very easy. Uh, mm. Quants problem solving or even uh, data sufficiency questions were uh, pretty easy. Mm -hmm. But when I got into OG and started to look into harder problems, then I got to know, okay, this is something else. And uh, there are really good questions in GMAT. So okay. that time I was working and I was not getting much time. Uh, so um, not even daily, maybe on weekends. On The uh, preparation was very much, uh, um, it was not consistent. So I was, whenever I used to get time, I used to just go through the, those questions. And... Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I noticed that, uh, that I'm very weak in verbal as per the requirement of GMAT. Because mm -hmm. uh, my first, uh, in June or July itself, I took the first official uh, test which, in which I scored around 580. Okay. I don't remember the split, but the uh, verbal was around 23 or something, 23 okay. or 24, like that. So I, I definitely got to know that, okay, once I, know that I knew that I can improve and Maybe 40 or 49 was quants that time as well, but the verbal was the uh, main concern. And okay. I tried to uh, surf online. I, I was looking uh, materials or YouTube videos, but I was not getting the anything on which I can rely upon. Mm -hmm. So again, I talked to Gaurav. Uh, so he also suggested me the, uh, regarding that EGMAT that it is a, a good thing. A few of his friends also recommended. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I thought that, okay, I'll, I'll take it. Let's spend some few bucks. And mm -hmm. if that is getting me a decent score, why not uh, go for it? Then first December, I, or second December, I just uh, enrolled in the EG mat verbal. Okay. But you, did you start studying? Did you, before that, did you study from books? Did you try doing the book? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Basically means a uh, few PDF man, Manhattan uh, sentence correction PDF. And all, I just had a glance, uh, not seriously. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, seriously, I started with the uh, this thing only, EG mat uh, verbal. I mm -hmm. got to know because the PDF was the problem with PDFs were uh, it was at some point it was getting boring and I was not able to mm -hmm. grasp much and it was taking more time. Okay. And uh, when I started with the EG mat videos, I felt that I, I'm able to cover more in less time and I was able to retain those things. Uh, mm -hmm. Since the videos were uh, mm -hmm. having its own advantage that you you are aware. Mm -hmm. Okay. So within two weeks or something, I got to know that, okay, this thing will help me. And uh, how did you get to know? Because I was able to know the actual why it is wrong. Earlier, I used to mark the uh, question based on my gut feeling. Or, okay, it sounds good. This mm -hmm. answer option sounds right. But that mm -hmm. is not the correct approach uh, unless I'm uh, pretty sure that why it is right or, and why others are correct. 
so that was the correct approach which i even learned in uh, the course material and mm-hmm. that was the right approach as well so after that i started uh, improving in verbal and that is uh, means uh, we can check see mm-hmm. my, in my uh, first attempt which was 40 approx 40 days after i took the uh, egmat verbal course mm-hmm. i improved to v35 which was a, a good improvement i was yeah. actually i was actually satisfied with my uh, verbal score because it was better than what i had scored earlier in any of my uh, sectional test mm-hmm. and yeah in between there were days very frustrating when uh, especially rc and sentence correction mm-hmm. rc there was in scholarium i used to there were days i used to score 2 percentile 3 percentile 4 percentile and i was completely means uh, on the verge of crying that what is this man what i need to do i was not able to complete even half of the questions and all uh, so those days were very very frustrating. then then what happened now this is interesting for me so so yeah. because people who go through this and come through it i want to understand what's the mental journey they've gone through how did you i, uh, I used to talk to my brother elder brother regarding this thing he used to motivate me no don't lose lose hope and all these kind of things but yeah 2 percentile 3 percentile 4 percent it's actually very very uh, means uh, how can i perform <laughs> worse than that no one can do that means lower than 2% or 3% the stuff okay okay and then and then i means again uh, again uh, i went through the course okay i uh, after i scored the 660 this i is, took this a, is all during those 40 days just a span of yeah. 40 days Yeah, yeah, just span you, of forty. You went through that two percent, dial three percent, dial, and then you talk to your brother. The brother would motivate you. You would come back and you would go through the course again, revise the portions, then do scholarium again. Correct, correct. Man, you you did a you went through a lot in those forty days, and you uh, did a good job with the V with the six sixty, the V thirty five. I mean, V. Uh, yeah, uh, verbal. I was satisfied with the verbal, which was my main main concern. But this time, quant uh, betrayed me, and I got forty five. which i never even imagined that i'll be getting a 45 in cons uh, then after that i got means i took around two months of break i didn't even look at those uh, material or books mm. and uh, i again started with in march and i started thinking that what i did wrong i started to go through those all those verbal videos again mm-hmm. again i knew that cons i i i got to know i got my esr and i got to know that i did uh, some uh, pretty silly uh, silly mistakes mm mm-hmm. and for verbal also i tried to improve even if i got a 35 i was not very confident that next time also i'm about to get or not so mm-hmm. i thought maybe by fluke or by it, that was my good day in verbal so i i was able to got a 30 35 so i was not very sure so i again went through all the videos all the uh, course content mm-hmm. concept materials and uh, what i got to know that i was gaining more in the second time i were i was viewing those those videos mm-hmm. so i i got to know many things which i i i guess i overlooked or missed in the first first uh, watch then uh, i again did a third watch okay uh, especially those topics in which i was weaker like modifier and all okay evaluate how you, type how did you figure out you were weaker uh, based on scholarium uh, performance oh, data, okay. yeah and uh, i was seeing that those questions i was making are wrong you, you know why i'm asking this question because uh, these things which are so obvious to you you'd be surprised how many people don't do this that hey man look at scholarly and figure out that you're weak and go oh. back and revise okay okay so but carry on so modifiers or evaluate yeah yeah uh, in cr is uh, getting evaluate type questions i was uh, uh, getting wrong most of the times so a third time i went through all those uh, sectional sections in which i was uh, really weak and this time i just rc uh, i left and i i thought that uh, i'll read it properly and i'll uh, uh, just go with the passage understand it properly the way uh, egmat uh, it's given in the egmat uh, content mm. and i was Uh, really confident this time in my verbal that i am definitely going to get 35 30, 36 in my verbal for sure mm-hmm. in my sectional test i was getting 35 36 frequently few times i got 38 one time i got 42 as well so this time i was sure that okay verbal i have uh, means improved a lot uh, now again mm-hmm. this time also quants i did not uh, prepared much 
I just uh, went through the videos of uh, uh, eGMAT quants mm-hmm. and whatever problems were there. That also not all, but most of the uh, tests and all mm-hmm. I went. And the GMAT club test, which came through eGMAT course itself, mm-hmm. I started taking those tests. And uh, uh, past two, three weeks, I was free, able to score f- Q50, Q51 uh, uh, consistently. Mm-hmm. So I was confident that, okay, I, I am able to. I can do that. So mm-hmm. I got to know that I have that uh, capability. Only thing is, was that I was not able to uh, produce that uh, in the test. So I, I thought that I need to uh, concentrate more on uh, uh, performing on the test uh, than on my concept. I got to know that I, if I am able to get verbal 38 and 37, mm-hmm. it means concept wise, I am not that bad. Oh, you're very good. It's 85 percentile. <laughs> Yeah, so the same thing. Uh, uh, I did that on the test day as well, and it worked. Yeah, I mean, Q51, V39, almost 90th percentile on verbal. That's very, very good. I mean, st- someone who started from a V23, yeah, now, now and, is- and and Rajat, you don't know, my uh score was very inconsistent, even recently last month, also, I, I got a two, uh, V23. Mm-hmm. In one of the uh, sectional tests, mm-hmm. maybe it was because I was not able to concentrate uh, in those tests because I was taking at home only. And uh, if I am taking a test in a, on a test center, then the concentration will be completely on the test itself. Mm-hmm. So that was a uh, one of the reasons that mm-hmm. I was able to score better in test. Yeah, I mean you got the same score as your friend from IIT Kharagpur did. So yeah, overall it was uh, same. Yeah, he is at Q50 V40, right? Uh, 42 and 49 something. Yeah, 42 and 14. Okay. 42 verbal and 49 yeah. quants. Yes. Oh, actually, that's even better. You did better than an IIT and in quant. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's that's good. All right. So it must feel really, really. I mean, you must be really happy. Yeah, yeah. After I saw the score, I was really very happy. Means uh, after quants only, I got to know that uh, I actually finished the test uh, quant section uh, two and a half minutes. Uh, mm before the time mm-hmm. uh, and um, verbal also i was able to complete uh, 35 questions one question i was not able to finish but mm-hmm. uh, the, in the first test i was uh, means i missed two or three questions in quants mm-hmm. and around five questions in verbal mm-hmm. i just guessed or something like that okay. this time I, I i improved my timing as well in both the uh, sections and after quants, I, I was sure that I, I, I'll be getting around 450 or 451 for sure. Uh, Q50 or Q51 for sure. Okay. But verbal, I was worried that I was praying that at least I should get 30, 35 or 36 so that I'll uh, hit at around 720 or something. But uh, once the score popped up, it was... Uh, okay. Good. So, and how, how, I mean, you, how did your parents feel? Uh, yeah, they are actually very happy. Okay. And and then how about your wife? Yeah, she's also uh, very happy. Yeah. Okay. She also gone through a lot of things. <laughs> she has to sacrifice. Uh, yes. In the past uh, six months, especially. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, all of that is now bearing fruit. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. Okay. So let's talk about your... Uh, so I think I want to talk about a couple of other things. So you followed the meaning-based approach in, in SC? Yep. Yep, uh, yep, correct. That was the second time and third time what I was reading. That's what I improved my from my first attempt. That I was just going with the grammar and the rules and all. The second attempt, I, I saw the meaning and all those things, which was given in the video the first time itself, but I maybe I overlooked or I did not concentrate on those, on those parts. Okay. What about pre-thinking? And critical reasoning. That that was absolutely great thing in CR uh, pre thinking approach that I grasped in the first uh, try itself, mm-hmm. and that's why my CR was better uh, in the first attempt. I, I see. This quality was ninety second percentile in CR. Yeah, yeah. So so and then uh, how did you find scholarinium? Uh, scholarinium was very good. In fact, the uh, uh, overall material as well. I wanted to tell about quants as well. Even though I was a uh, uh, confident and decent in quants but only material i used in quants was eg mapped apart from that i did not refer to any of other material 
few of my friends suggested uh, for advanced topic you, you should refer to uh, ncert books and all but i i did not uh, get time or after just going through the videos whatever content was there that was sufficient not more not less but it was enough to solve the questions of gmat hmm. and i yeah, started I that's what your goal you don't want to go to iit questions no yeah yeah correct okay oh well, that's, that's that's good to know uh, uh okay that's that's wonderful so so let's talk about what you want to do next so i understand you're from a tech background you've worked in tcs you've worked in infosys yeah so what do you really want to do uh that that's the second part of this uh now we have the second part yes okay so yeah i actually i am not uh, very much aware of the colleges uh which forget about there, the I colleges should... you are aware of all the indian b schools right yeah correct correct the b schools are b school i mean the us b schools are way better professors that's something which is there mm-hmm. but but essentially a business school is a business school so so but what is it that you want to do from with your life uh that's a uh, that's a very subjective answer i means what do you professionally what do you want to study or what do you want to do post your mba if you had the choice and money were not a constraint uh financial independence is the long term goal but again for that i i should be having a, a decent uh, investment and all okay mm. but yeah in short term after post mba i i should be in a, a, a well known organization uh are getting a decent yeah but but essentially i mean do you want to be in the tech industry do you want to be in consumer goods do you want to i mean do you like technology that's something which which is which see, is that's a post mba see i like technology but i know that post mba i cannot be into the technology part say i i will not be in the programming part or anything mm-hmm. uh, okay so which i like that is one thing in which i will not be there so i am open to other industries as well and means i just want to explore the uh, other side as well it's not like